Daryl Darden, and I love J. Ross TV. What's up, y'all? This your boy J. Ross hanging out with my cat, guitarist extraordinaire, Mr. Daryl Darden, y'all. He in St. Louis finna do it up big, y'all. Daryl, tell him why you in town, man. Well, I'm here to do an event for all the seniors of St. Louis, yes. and I'm honored to be here and be back home. I even brought y'all some California weather. How you like it? <laughs> we love it, dude. What is it, about 80 degrees? Come on. It ain't been 80 <laughs> degrees in years. <laughs> no, but anyway, no, it's a pleasure to be back home, and um, I'm getting ready to do a concert for all the seniors, and I'm going to go back through memory lane and do some of their favorites that made them feel, you know, young again. Now, Daryl, you've been a guitarist for a while, man, and you can set the standard in the music industry, man. Anything that you can tell these young cats, man, about how to prepare themselves to achieve what you have achieved? Yes, I would say dig deep in your heart and make it bigger than you. In other words, just playing guitar just to be seen is not, that wasn't my goal. My goal was to touch people and make it like a medicine. Yeah. The original medicine was music in the biblical days and they used music to ward off demons and uh, depression, high blood pressure, any ailment on your body, music have always took your mind off of it yeah. and been like a stimulant to, to uh, you know, make you feel better. But Darrell, you done play with notables such as George Benson, man. How How is that, man? How do you get to be get to that point? Well, I, I just uh, prayed 35 years ago. It's either for my uh, I prayed 35 years ago. Uh, George Benson was in concert at SIU Edwardsville. So I actually was, you know, very passionate about meeting this man because through his music I felt his soul. So sure enough, man, 35 years later, I, you know, li I'm living in Ca Los Angeles, California. George Benson's cousin, I met him, and once we became friends, man, he called George on the phone. The rest is history, man. George invited me out to the house. He really showed me some nice hospitality. I spent three days at George's house. Yeah. And when I woke up the first morning, I just thank God for answering that prayer. Right. 35 years previously, in St. Louis, I prayed to meet him. So God answered prayers, and uh, I'm a witness that uh, be careful what you pray for. <laughs> if you're doing his will and you line yourself up with God's will, believe it or not, he will give you the desires of your heart. Hey, I'm a witness. I feel you. Now, is there anything that you practice on particular to make you as good as you are to loosen your fingers up or work forward that they help the young folk? You practice your scales every day, and that loosens up your hands, your major, minor scales. You get more familiar with the instrument, and that enables your hands to play pretty much any line you possibly may hear that you, you know, would have to execute. Yeah. So with that being said, I would encourage all young kids just to practice every day, take as many notes as you can from other older musicians. And uh, that helped me a long way, man, to just play with my elders. And they passed things on down to me. So that was my, uh, you know, big break in St. Louis, getting called from older guys that brought me on the bandstand with them. And yeah. through, I didn't go to school for this. So oh, yeah? all of my work has been, you know, on the job training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. different experiences with different musicians. Now, and in doing that, were you afraid at any point? Yeah, like, of course. I, yeah. How do you so, fight that fear? You, you prepare. You prepare. It forces you to keep from being embarrassed. You have to practice two or three days before for whatever music you're going to play. So I was able to prepare quite well, and uh, that enabled me to, you know, perfect yeah. when I got on the band stage. Yeah. So man, uh, that's that's it. You know, preparation for any gig. If you do that, when you get on the stage, you say, "Well, I at least try to prepare, even if you make mistakes." Right. But well, if you don't. No preparation means you can find yourself in an embarrassing situation. They call a song that's too fast for you. Your fingers can't execute the lines uh -huh. because you haven't been practicing. You didn't prepare. Now, how can folks find you on Facebook and all that? Uh, Unfortunately, I'm not savvy enough. I, I, my <laughs> Facebook page is not quite up yet. But you can go just Google DarylDarden.com and uh, there's information how to contact me. And uh, I'm all, I'm available for any kind of event. So, oh yeah. Uh, I think 
you can go through Jay Ross also if you like to. Oh yeah. Because I'll send him a commission if you want to go through Jay Ross and contact Daryl Darden. I'm available. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get mine. Hey, yeah. Scott, this is what Jay Ross. We in St. Louis with the cat, yes. Daryl Darden. We're gonna let him get ready to set up for the thing. You got something else you want to add? I also like to thank Miss Ollie Stewart. Oh yeah. She's the one flew me in, and uh, she has wellness program. Right. The wellness center is for seniors, and uh, every year I come in town, I always go by the wellness center and play for the seniors. So Miss yeah. Ollie Stewart, I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless you. She's been a blessing to me. She's like a mother. So she's helped the whole community of yeah. St. Louis. All right, y'all. We thank what you've done for St. Louis, Miss Ollie. Thank you. All right, y'all. That's Daryl. Daryl, we're going to let him bounce, y'all. He got it set up. He's going on in a few minutes. He's going to let me get a little footage, y'all. J. Ross TV, 10 million strong. We gone. Peace. All right. God bless.